that loud enough? That's for me. There's Paris, Richard. Fresh from the beach, from the look of it. <laughs> How are you doing? Okay. Hello. Recording. Recording in progress. <laughs> <laughs> yes, your arrival was duly captured. Yeah, we could raise the money, but it would be wrong. We're good to go. We do have to wait till seven o'clock. Like, oh, you got sorry. This is seven. This is seven. Okay, go ahead. All right, seven o'clock it is, according to the world of. Apple iPhones. Um, I'm going to call to order uh, the Planning Commission for this meeting for the City of Saugatuck, June 6th, 2022. 16th. What did I say? I'm sorry. Yes, June 16th. Thank you. 2022. Uh, I will entertain a motion as to approval of the agenda for tonight. How about if we call the roll? And then I'm going to call the roll but okay. in reverse order. I'm oh, sorry. Okay. So you call the roll, right? I, I call the roll. Go ahead, please. Um, broker is excused. Crawford? Here. Fox? Here. Gardner? Here. Gaunt? Here. Hereford? Here. Mans? Here. We have a quorum. Thank you very much, Cindy. Uh, now I'll entertain that motion I mentioned a moment ago for approval of tonight's agenda. So moved. Second. You get it moved by Gardner, seconded by Mans. Mm -hmm. Voice vote is fine. Voice vote is fine. Mm -hmm. All those in favor of approval of the agenda? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Agenda is approved. And the uh, follow up uh, motion, uh, which I'll entertain a motion for the approval of the minutes for April, what, 21st, right? Yes. The meeting of April 21st, the revised minutes, I should say. Mm -hmm. So moved. Second. Second. Three seconds. Take your pick, Cindy. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Okay, so we have approval of the minutes from the- Voice vote is fine. 21st meeting, oh yeah, voice vote. Those in favor of approving the minutes from the longest meeting we've had in a while? Signify by saying aye, yes, whatever. Aye. Those opposed? <coughs> minutes from 21st April meeting are approved. We are now open for public comment on agenda items only, uh, with a limit of three minutes on those comments. We have on Zoom. We have Jim, Jim Bout. Just I Jim don't know Bout, that yet. He doesn't have his hand raised. So. From the ZBA, right? And there's no one present in the gallery here. So I'll close public comment at this point. There being none. Old business. This this is where I'm going to turn it to you for your PowerPoint. No, oh, that's this is new business. Okay, what what changes and dis, changes and corrections to the zoning ordinance discuss? Yes, now you can turn it over to me. <laughs> Not well, that's what I said. Yeah, <laughs> I got it. Okay. Okay. Cindy's going to educate me, and the rest of you will just have to bear with us. I'll I'll try to um, be succinct. I don't want to keep you here very long, and I'm not going to read you this 155 page document, but um, I did put together a little presentation <laughs> of what the changes are and two options about how to, how to proceed from here. I just made some highlights about what the changes are, where there's a series, a series of items that are listed. I properly punctuated them. A lot of them did not have a comma in between some of the um, some of the uses or the li things listed in a series, and it can change the meaning if you don't have the comma in there. So this is just an example of one. You can see right there the little red comma. I did it all in red lines so you can 
um, see what I changed. Um, I corrected all the agencies, like um, Michigan Department of Environmental Quality was listed many times and that's been um, renamed to Environment, Great Lakes and Energy or EGLE. Some um, capitalization things I fixed, typos. There's several of these typos. Um, this was Lake Word instead of Lake Ward. So that these were the easy changes. I picked the um, highlighted things. Um, removed unregulated items from definitions. There's a definition of frontage primary entry, but nowhere in the ordinance does it reference that. So we don't need that there. And I did search through the entire ordinance several times for each one that I deleted because if they sometimes word it a little bit differently, you might miss it. But I did look. Um, clarifications, or I guess these are, this one's not really a clarification, but there is no such word as berming. The word should be berms. And um, as required by the city ordinance, not by the city, because it's the ordinance. And I could leave city in there to say city ordinance, but it's a minor thing. Um, simplifications and where a comma makes a difference, a big difference is this is an example. Gift and specialty shop is not defined. Um, and I don't know what, how you tell the difference between a shop and a gift shop. I mean, even if it was a furniture shop, you could be giving those as gifts. So um, I just think it unnecessarily complicates things. And then you can see here where it says swimming pool and exercise facilities. That was, there was no comma there. So that meant you could have a swimming pool and an exercise facility. You could have both, but you couldn't have one or the other. So, and then updated some terms. Land use plan is now called a master plan <coughs> in our zoning and planning enabling act. Eliminating some conflicts. In the general definition section, there's a definition of sign, and I changed it to say C section 154.14 through 154.141. And that this is the definition of sign. Where did it go? <laughs> This is the definition of sign in the sign section down here. And you can see it's different than this one. So instead of just having nothing under the general comments or the general definitions, I have see this section below. And um, it has other definitions of other signs as well. Window sign, freestanding sign. Um, wall sign, projecting sign. So instead of having that conflict, just simplify it. That, um, that section is, is defining signs. Is that the section where it says, goes on to say how, which, what can exist where or what mm -hmm. shouldn't exist where? Yep, it's all the regulations about signage. These are the this one that's redlined is in the general definitions uh, right in the beginning of the ordinance. Um, eliminate redundancies. This <laughs> this section always kind of bothered me <laughs> because it says in four different places what the setbacks are for an accessory building. And I don't really think we need to keep saying it over and over and over. What it does is it, if you want to, if in the future you want to make a change, you have to remember to change all of them. And that makes it a little more complicated. And we just want it to be clear, straightforward, and easy to read. So that would default to that first one then or? or? Well, they all say the same thing. 
Yeah. I know, but the, you would eliminate then. I would eliminate the, I would pick out which one is the most effective and way to have it. The ones that are highlighted, I need a little more time to look at them. I was just doing kind of a high uh, a first review. Um, eliminate subjective conditions. This talks about manufactured homes and it has to be an excellent condition. Well, who's, how are you gonna decide? Yeah. yeah, right. What is excellent condition? Does it have any peeling paint or? Is it missing a shingle? What What's excellent condition? Um, inconsistencies. This is the R1 Community Residential Zone District. And I highlighted this section that says residential land use is the only use that will be permitted or encouraged in this district. And then it goes on to list the, some other uses that are not um, residential land use, like religious facilities, public service. So I think that's inconsistent and that line should be removed. I wanted to look at it again before I redlined it out, but that's where that's coming from. It's inconsistent. Um, here, so before we go off that one, wouldn't it maybe be more appropriate to put additional language in um, three to say, because they're subject to special land uses, which is item C, mm -hmm. wouldn't it be better to say with the exception or something to the effect of? Uh, like well, the the, otherwise this, listed? The second point kind of yeah. does that. The one right above it. It says what the third point says basically, and then there are the whatever exceptions or I guess preserve the residential character of the district and provide a mechanism for orderly development, blah, blah, blah. So I don't see how that's really substantively different than the highlighted area. So, you know, it's just, it's just the conflict. It says we're only gonna allow residential uses. That's, only, that's all that's gonna be permitted. And then it lists some that aren't residential uses mm -hmm. like public, essential public services, religious facilities. Right, correct. So that's why I think that should be eliminated, but I haven't quite done all the digging that I need to do on it yet. That's why it's highlighted and not redlined. It certainly begs, to Russ's point, it certainly begs a line like except as, except as noted or- Except as, as permitted, yep. Um, and this is the Maple Street Zone District, which kind of does the same thing. Single family residential development to the exclusion of all other uses. And then again, it lists essential public services and um, religious facilities. So it either needs to be fixed or eliminated. And I'm hearing that you want it fixed. You what? I'm hearing that you'd prefer for it to be fixed rather than eliminated. So we're getting there. Use clarification. This one has, this one says in this particular zone district, planned unit developments are a permitted use. Well, planned unit development is an overlay zone district. It's not a use. So it should not be listed as a use because it's an overlay zone district that gets special attention from Planning Commission and from Council. Doesn't even make sense. Mm -hmm. Even says, as a list, it doesn't make sense. It says special land uses, and then you've got planned unit development. And so planned unit development's not a use. Correct. It definitely doesn't fall in special land use. Um, C4 zone issues. <laughs> On sites of five acres or more, see if I can make this work. We have our zoning map and all together, all the C4 zone district parcels added up would not add up to five acres or more. There are these little yellow districts here along um, Park Street and a few little areas here along Lake Street. I think that's Lake Street. So that, that just didn't make, 
there is no C4 parcel of land that's over five acres or more. Now, could one be rezoned to that? I don't, I don't know because that's waterfront property and there's, it's all developed. There's no undeveloped land. So the, um, so my thought on this, Cindy, is without knowing the parcels specifically in those zones, um, even though they're all privately owned and developed, could in theory have someone who ties up, which this happens quite often on waterfront properties like this, is that someone buys up three or four raises everything and builds a monstrosity. Five acres is, there have to be pretty big. But <laughs> the bucks are there. I mean, this is happening. And so maybe that's just thinking ahead. Maybe that's... Okay. But I guess I if all the ones that are currently zone C4 don't even add up to five acres, so if they bought them all, they wouldn't have five acres. But if they bought some other zone district and asked for it to be rezoned... Then, then there's rezoned. Yeah. yeah. Like, so the other one on the bottom, number four, uh, the minimum 10 foot wide landscape berm or green belt is addressed in a, another section of the zoning ordinance. It doesn't need to be. No 10 foot wide there. landscape. All non residential parking areas. It's kind of like the redundancy with the setbacks for the accessory buildings. Because there's a whole other section that talks about landscaping and berming and screening. So all non-residential non parking areas from residential uses on adjacent properties. Is there an example of this in the zone? Because when I see non-residential, I'm thinking commercial or some other non-residential use. I understand the point you're making about the fact that it doesn't currently apply to any of the properties in that zone. But I think down the road, there could be situations Well, there's no where, problem about leaving it in there. It's just, yeah. it's kind of an awkward thing that some, it doesn't make any sense. Later on, when it talks about landscaping, is it consistent with what it says here in four? Do you remember? It is, but there are also some other examples of where in a particular zone district, it says something and then it's addressed in another zone, another section of the ordinance, and they they become different because you amend one and then you don't amend the other one, and it causes um, some issues because some people will just read the one, mm -hmm. and we do have um, we we run into that sometimes where somebody will say, "Hey, Cindy, you didn't do this right." Because this is this is what it says, but if you look in another section, it will say the same thing, but in a different. Um, we're all pretty familiar with this zone district, um, <laughs> and the uh, purpose of it. Straight in my eyes. On that, it, one. that that one's pretty small, but this is mm -hmm. the one that we went through with. Um, Christine recently, uh -huh. and it says that it's to preserve the residential flavor while promoting commercial land use. Right. I it's somehow this has to be either better described, or if there's some uses that are not compatible, then they need to be struck. So. This is, this is for thinking. This is highlighted, so it's not redlined. Would it make any sense to try and approach that, you know, the, the two elements, residential and commercial development, and it would be, be an ordinance change. Mm -hmm. But issue one, I declare, declare one or the other as the Prime. Predominant. Predominant. Yeah, the one that, you know, which to me would be residential, that you say this is a predominantly residential zone. However, on a special land use basis, will, you know, entertain applications. Huh? Um, entertain applications. Yeah, entertain applications, which then gives you a look at any yeah. business use in the entire zone, well, entertainment or otherwise. 
That's this is one for thinking, and it's highlighted because it's still for thinking. And what I, I'll tell you, in kind of in advance, what I'll bring to you is probably some couple options, like. Um, this is predominantly residential. However, some, certain <coughs> non-residential uses will be considered under a special land use permit. Compatible, maybe. And then, and then we'll want to, at the same time, look at all the permitted uses and the special land uses. I guess you have to look at each zone because in that zone, I would say the majority of it is commercial. Yeah. Well, that's why I say declare one way or the other. That's, that's so that we're not I'm just, I'm just saying when you say that that's primarily residential, I'm like, no, in that zone that's using as an example, it's primarily commercial. And what Patrick Hudson did when he um, evaluated each of the zones and split the commercial zone district up into four different or five different commercial zone districts, he um, went through and listed all the different uses and what they're you know, what the uses were right. and evaluated it that way. And that's what I would intend to do before I bring it to you back to you for a, for your consideration. Um, this thing is very sensitive. You know, looking at that, this new, I mean, it seems like there's quite a difference between retail shop and bar slash restaurant mm -hmm. in terms of that whole, you know, it, definitely. It, um, you know, it, it, it wants to encourage, <laughs> it, it will allow commercial while still in, uh, encouraging the residential flavor, but you know, it's just quite a difference there. So which, maybe, which is why we had so much trouble with it. So maybe instead of, maybe in addition to clarifying that, Maybe restaurant is not a good use in that zone district, even as a special land use. Well, I think you're getting into, <clears throat> it's definitely a discussion because you can make points mm -hmm. that, you know, a hotel could be- Can have a restaurant. Can have as many people potentially if you built a larger hotel or you had a large pool or you had an outdoor uh, music venue as part of the hotel. So again, it's, you know, we're just using they're throwing you know terms in there, but then you need something that kind of can identify the limits of what size of a hotel or what you know amusement and recreational services. I'm like if somebody would put a water slide in, that's an amusement, but would that be appropriate? You know, so you can't just say restaurant in that situation, I don't think, because there's too many other examples of other ones that are there where I would say that you could find something that mm -hmm. would be equally um, it's negative mm -hmm. or be considered as well, nuisance right. as what a well, restaurant right. would be. If the special if a special land use requirement might get you out of having to, to put in things like motion picture studio and all these goofy things that we wouldn't, you know, no one would ever want. I missed that Just special one. land use. But if you put special it. land use, then it's gotta come here. We right. gotta talk about right. it. We gotta get neighbors involved. And if it's, you know. It doesn't belong there. It'll come come to light. I I, I think it's you know th then I think you with the long list I think you run the risk of having someone you know try and get something that isn't really on that list, but they try and get it under that and say, well, this is pretty much like one of these, and they're allowed, and <coughs> you know, that kind of nonsense. And thank you, Dan, for pointing out another correction that needs to be made. We um, last time we looked at the uh, commercial zone districts, we changed motion picture facilities to theaters. Um, so that will have to be added to the corrections. It just seems to me that, that the special land use gives city and all the citizens a chance to weigh in in judgment as what's going to be allowed in this particular area. And that's, and, and I, I sort of don't feel comfortable with us, you know, coming up with a list and then leaving some things off that have, you know, it's just leave them all off, right. make them all come here. I mean, you know, I mean, you can kind of list what is permitted and then even if anything you, that's not listed above it's a requires special a special land. land use. That makes sense. 
if we're okay with what's listed above. Well, see, I wouldn't even, I'd take everything off and make them all come here. I mean, you, honestly, so saying, you'd yeah. want you'd want a motion picture facility to come now be treated true. like a special land use. That is special land use. But even above, I mean, you know, that you get into, you know, retail store, I guess there's really only one type of retail store, but I, I'm i assuming someplace there must be the cannabis <clears throat> is must be in the ordinance someplace, because that's considered a retail store, but it's not allowed. Um, I think that's got its own um, domestic business repairs, art gallery, personal service establishment. And all of these uses do have a definition. Okay. They're all defined in the general definition section. So if I went to the definitions in the zoning ordinance, I could look up what um, but I, I see what, what you're it saying. said also, for. Like, well, I yeah. At the same time, it's you know, you have to kind of ask, well, if somebody was wanting to open up a sock shop, would they have to come before us to put as a special, or is that just considered it's in accordance with the zoning? But it becomes a challenge as to how you can well, we define to between permitted uses and special land uses. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, it's where you either go one way or the other kind of. Yeah. yeah, if you're permitted, then you're permitted by right. You come to me and you fill out the application. And if you meet the requirements of the zone district, you get a permit. If you're a special land use, then you come to me and I tell you, no, you need to right. go to the planning commission. So you'd still want to have some of them permitted because if somebody wanted to, you know, they, they know that they're in that zone, but they wanted to build a single family detached home like you've got up there. I really don't think they'd have to come before the planning commission to get approval to build a single family home within that commercial district. Right. Within that zone. So that, so I do think that you would need to have some that you could just handle without it coming. And anything not listed above is a special land use. That's kind of what I'm hearing too. Now I wouldn't mind seeing like the short-term rentals <laughs> move down to special land use as opposed <laughs> to just being able to be approved. We're going to talk about those um, too some, someday <laughs> soon after the after the state lets that legislation die, right. I don't want to do anything. That is going to die, right? I think so. I've been going to the MML meetings every other Monday, and that's what they're they're thinking that it's <laughs> going to die. But I simply cannot understand the thinking behind. Call your senator, Eric Nesbitt. No, I've 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 done. I don't know why you. We're off topic, but I don't know why don't you know would why take away from local jurisdictions oversight on short term rentals and give it to the state, which means move it so far away. I mean, one, can't do you, you know, it. so they'll come up with a list of stuff that won't be enforced. It'll be in Lansing. You have to go there for a hearing or a meeting like this. I and mean, that's insane. Yep. I, I, and they know nothing about the community. Right. Literally. So I don't want to do anything to aggravate them. No until after that no i don't want to just but I, mean, I was going to say that it doesn't mean you can't have them but it could be one that you would say becomes I mean, falls into a special land use as opposed to just being granted within it right but and i'm assuming my naivety here someplace in our zoning says you can't have first floor residential, residential. Rent. yes many of our commercial zone districts say that i shouldn't say many we don't have we have four left, I think. Water Street North, Water Street South, Water Street East, and Central City. And Central City does not allow first floor and Water Street North does not allow first floor, but it does allow single family detached. And we tried that and we got severely rebuked and, yeah. <laughs> and made the, City Council changed their ordinance that when you have an ordinance change, you don't just bring it to them. You have to do a first reading and a second reading. So um, let's see. I just, my, my default setting is in favor of, I know it is more work for, but is for greater views by the public before something 
gets done and then you're trying to put the genie back in the bottle and it never works out right yeah it doesn't so yeah, even when, even, so if, even, if we can. even if it's a sock shop which i don't know what someone would have <laughs> trouble with but i could see somebody i mean yeah. you, you know so architect people have trouble with all sorts of things at least they get the voice at least they get the chance to weigh in before it's a done deal sunlight's always good huh sunlight's always good yeah you know you get some somebody with you know birkenstock thing oh we shouldn't be encouraging people to wear socks <laughs> whatever and then to correct some errors just that um restaurants didn't or didn't fit into either category for the dimensional requirements because they were a uh, permitted use by right so they fell into one dimensional requirements and then they got changed to special land use and so they they weren't covered so just to correct some errors like that. And then motion picture facility was changed to theater. So it wouldn't just be motion pictures, it could be live entertainment. <coughs> That's so touchy. Belongs in another section. I showed you the section with all the accessory uses and all the setbacks. Well, now we have a whole nother section that's halfway through the ordinance that says, permitted accessory structures and uses in all residential zone districts. That needs to be put back in the first part where all the um, accessory structure regulations are. Um, state licensed residential facilities, we cannot regulate those out. The state law preempts us on that one. Another one. This is for <laughs> this is the one that really kind of bugs me. It's it's um this is under the special land use design standards for specific design standards for special land use for some particular things, and it has restaurants and it has um, hotels and motels. And it also talks about minor waterfront construction. And in the minor waterfront construction, it says you can have a single dock for your own residential use. And then here it says you can have accessory structures for shower and laboratory facilities and refuse containers and parking and recreational facilities such as playgrounds, picnic areas, which is just in, in complete contrast with what is allowed in minor waterfront construction. Did that weigh in on the, or was that, did that get cited on the other side of the river? Did there was rise? there was a guy that wanted to put in two docks at his residential and it's the ordinance under minor waterfront says you can have one dock per lot, not per parcel, but per lot. And he wanted to put two docks and he went to zoning board of appeals for a variance. And this was brought out during that time as well. Um, it doesn't really say how many docks you can have, but it's just, for the launching and handling of recreational boats and commercial boats, I don't think you want commercial boats boats in a I'm not sure quite how to handle this one yet. These seem to me like very objective regulations and not discretionary because special land use is pretty special that it um gives you a lot of discretionary authority so this minor construction falls within the special land use definition no because i i'm just trying to figure out where this falls in it doesn't talk. really fall in because minor construction is not a special land use it's a single dock for your single personal use right so then I'm wondering, so whenever it says, where it says site I don't remember. uses may include, I think you're always just bringing up issues when you have the word may in there. Yeah. It may include this, doesn't mean it may not include it. <laughs> um, 
waterfront construction and your packet is near the very end of the ordinance. And this is in the section that talks about special land use. So the special land use section, right? Yes, it's the special land use section. <coughs> section 154.092, right? Yes. And then, Did you say 092? Yeah, 154.092. And then the part that talks about minor construction, waterfront construction is the... Um, yeah, here it is. Yep, I found it. 154, I think. 200. So that's one of the things that it, <coughs> it's highlighted. It's not redlined. It needs to be, needs some thinking on it. Conflicts with other ordinances. The requirement that um, all transactions are required to occur within a structure has been struck from the, the business section of the ordinance. It doesn't say that anymore. You don't have to take money in a building. And I think that was <coughs> in big part targeted at the dock. And I shouldn't say targeted at, but it was Probably a bad part, choice of, of words. <laughs> part of the reason that the, that that was considered because people, well, there was a, an opposition <coughs> to having non brick and mortar businesses and there was hawkers and peddlers and selling t shirts out of the trunk of your car. So that was what that was in there. But this commercial boat thing, I, I'm only aware of two commercial boats that we have. That would be the Star of Sagatok and the Duck. So, But for the same reason that, that I assume it was put in, would it not possibly come into play at some point in the future? I mean, somebody might give a boat ride and take the money get a slip, take the money. I, well, I don't know how they, that. I assume they probably do. But. A commercial boat is not a charter boat. Right. I was gonna ask charter if boat is not a commercial boat. It's a different thing when you look at the definitions. So um, commercial boat would be maybe a water taxi. Would what? Be water a water taxi. taxi. Which it was kind of, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's just, uh, it's like chicken soup though, isn't it? I mean, does it need to come out or can it? Does it belong? I guess it doesn't belong in this section of the ordinance. It shouldn't be just for commercial boats. It should be for any kind of outside business. And that's already addressed in the business licensing section of the ordinance. So E1, you're saying one was added in? Because of the duck and the star? Because of, yes, because they didn't think somebody at some time in the history of this ordinance didn't want um, non brick and mortar businesses to compete with businesses that just took money in the street. Okay. Which would primarily be the duck because the stars. Which is why they ended up with a little yeah. office. Now, now they got the little office which and they got used, no boat. <laughs> which they used to probably just take the money as they went right. in uh, and somebody down. Uh, so, so, even though it's not a boat, there's other examples in town now of. Look across, um, go anywhere where there's outside dining. That's taking yeah, and, money outside of a building. Right, plus there's uh, one, if not two, of the commercial tours that are picking people up and dropping them off at- The SCA. Yeah. Um, what's it called, Lakeshore, Lakeshore Tours? What's the- Something that US maybe it's want, not winery tours, but they take them to farms and- Yes, oh. and I don't know a lot about their operations, but they're, they're, I've seen them dropping people and picking people up. Huh. Dropping off and picking up in town. Mm -hmm. 
they're not boats, obviously, but it's a commercial operation nonetheless. Well, that's why they addressed it in the business licensing section. So, so commercial in, boats are treated differently than other places that take money outside. So food trucks, for example, or or the tour, the tour you're talking the about. The tour. And there's a walking tour. I see them around here all the time out the window. Um, talking about the history and different things. Well, look at it this way. I mean, if it was put in, I mean, not to necessarily single people out here, but that uh, this was put in primarily because of the duck, then if we take it out and the duck resumes operation, then what happens? It does, does he go back? I mean, does it, can he just collect the, the people come on board? He could. Well, then, but that would We're be a logistical nightmare for him. Um, that would be a logistical problem for him because everything now is computerized and online and um, they, people make reservations. So. Well, what we're saying is we disagree with the city council action or whatever that put this into play. This, this says everybody can do business outside except for commercial boats. And just out of curiosity, why were commercial boats singled out? I wasn't here when that happened. Okay. I, I can maybe wondered. go back and look at if if the documents exist, I can go back to the The other part about that is the two that keep getting cited are one is not like the other. Right. So those are the two commercial boats that I know that we have that fit the definition of commercial boats. Almost like they added it, as Rich says, mm -hmm. focused on one of those two, threw the other one in there which was probably already operating that way to begin with, because it, it, it might look more egalitarian or whatever, but really is only on, on one. So do we want to be singling somebody out for doing something? I, I'm gonna, I, that's, why I was, that's where I was going at it. Whether you like the duck or not, if you effectively spot zoned him on this. So, well, if you, if you take it out, you're basically saying that they do not have to have a permanent structure. Right. 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 Yeah. And, and, and as I'm reading this, commercial boat operations shall meet the requirements of the business license ordinance, which require that all transactions are to occur in a structure. That ordinance section that requires the business license took that out that it has to occur within a structure. Okay. So the business license. So that's taken it out. So this is where the inconsistency is, is that we yep. still have it in. We still the have business it. Business license is saying it's no longer. Quiet. Right. So the, I forget the name of the operation, but you know, what I'm talking about the tour. They're operating within the, they're operating within the ordinance by not having a structure in which they're collecting their money. They're probably doing it online or. Right, because the tour that we're, one of the ones we're talking about that picks up people at the SCA, they're not in violation of anything because they're not a commercial boat. If they were a commercial boat, then they would be in violation of this section. Even though they're meeting the standards of their business license or right. But you had taxis also who are taking money on the street. Right. And uh, you know, they're not a boat, so so in theory, if you were to remove this, you essentially anybody that wants to run an operation as long as they're compliant with the business license ordinance. So, well, I think you should, if you're going to take that out, I would leave it as commercial boat operations shall meet the requirements of their business license ordinance, period, which you can take out the part which requires, but they still yeah. need to state that they have to be in compliance with the business license. The commercial boats have to have a business license, don't right. they? So if they, they have, have to be. It depends where they are. I mean, I know it's somewhat redundant, but I think you. You know, the, 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 whoever is hauling these people around for these tours or whatever, isn't that a commercial bus? It's a commercial bus, but they it's- They have their own license. Right. But what you're saying is that they don't have to adhere to this standard. Right. right. That's that's not so that's why you want to get rid of at least the part that- uh, I agree. I think this just adds unnecessary complexity and it's sort of rife. It does. How much does the notion, does the 
preference for any and all businesses, ideally, to have brick and mortar because that equals property taxes. So all of these we're talking about, including the tours and, and so forth, pay no property taxes and get obvious benefit that people who do pay property taxes pay for. So I'm just wondering if the some of this, that motivation is, I could see that being the motivation real easy with the duck. You know, he parks it on the street, you know, we don't know how Let's much he takes in. Blah, blah, blah. And many of them do have a home office and their home office is still taxed as yeah, they're not property taxed. That's the property taxes so I guess it runs it, this deal. Right. Unless they're renting their home office space or paying somebody owns the space that they're if there's space that, yeah, <coughs> that space is, is in Saga Duck. Right. But if there's no connection that's, to I any think that's where it came from and I don't know, if, you know, that's more of a seems like a city council kind of a decision. I've way. seen I've seen I had a friend once. This, I'll make this short, whose wife came up with the idea of changing automobile oil on site, where, wherever you were. You, oh. So she'd go to a company that had, you know, 400 cars parked outside of it every day, yeah. office building. You know, you can offer this as a benefit to your people, $5 off, whatever. The minute the gas stations and such places found out about it, they screamed bloody murder. You know, I'm paying this much per year for this corner to do just that. And here this person comes in with none of that cost. You know, that's not fair. And, and, and there's some truth to that. Life isn't fair. Um, I mean, honestly, I mean, I, the way I look at it is that we want as many people visiting Sankatuk as we possibly can have. And if these are the kinds of services that people are desiring today, then I think that we should accommodate them to the degree that we can. And they wouldn't be doing what they're doing if they didn't have business to do it. So I'm just thinking about, you know, how do we continue to attract people here? I get that. I, I, and I'm not arguing to, to have that kind of requirement because I don't think it makes any sense. Right. And it's too hard to enforce and all the rest of it. But I think you can counterweight that by including some offset in the in their fees, mm -hmm. right. that you yes. know, so that the sock store pays one amount, but the guy who comes around with a pickup truck selling socks is he's gonna you know he's gonna take in X grand to do it. We're talking about a business license fee, or yeah, uh, not outside all of this, right. yeah, right. yeah, literally that it be that it be captured there. Which is what Cindy's trying to do here. I think she's just trying to point out that we've got one type mm -hmm. of no, no, I get it. business. I get it that we're requiring a structure where the other ones don't even have such a thing. So I agree that we could probably remove the uh, structure requirement. Well, I'll tinker with that a little bit and see if I can't figure out. On the balance, it sounds right. Yeah, it does. It, uh, but I would also counter, or I, I would echo what Richard just said that the council ultimately has to approve this, right? right. Yeah. I think there might be some things here that you offer up to them for, you know, not necessarily approve this, but, you know, right. think about this. Right. So I think this one, particularly given the personalities involved, was probably pretty contentious. And I think there's a lot of back and forth that went on with this. And I agree with what we're generally saying is that there should be consistency within the zoning code itself. But I just, I'd be curious to see where council comes 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 down on this because well, there's just a little. The other thing is, I mean, let's we talk about the duck. That's why this is here, I guess. So if the duck goes back in operation and we change it, the first thing there'll be is a for rent sign on the on the, the building that he's yeah. renting right now. There'll be a you know a space available at what thousand dollars a month or whatever they are. But I think the, you know, to, like to Russ's point in that is. We can bring it up and then it would be something because the planning commission is just trying to identify all the inconsistencies. Yeah, right. And then the council will be they the one that will decide the if they want to. They get paid the big dollars. <laughs> <laughs> and the second part is just that um, 
I don't understand what it has to do with commercial boats, one for each three through 20 people in the county health department regulations. The county doesn't regulate that anymore. That's the Michigan plumbing code. So, Perfect. and I don't know how you count these three through 20 people, <laughs> three through 20 people that ride on the boat. So, <laughs> so in this example for the duck, mm -hmm. you would have had to provide a yep. bathroom. Yep. At least one. And I don't think that he does. So yeah. anyway, it wouldn't be regulated by the county health department. It would be regulated by the Mich uh, Michigan Plumbing Code. Okay. Reference state statutes. Um, actually, one of the um, Zoning Board of Appeals members pointed out to me that sometimes we don't always match up to the state statute and we should reference the statute in the ordinance. So that simply adds that. Yeah, simply just adds what the state statute is. And I think they're, uh, we've used other language and other parts that say MCL 125.6.2. This one, I'm dealing with one of these right now, and I think it needs consequences. It doesn't have any consequences, except that if you fail to remove or repair a dangerous or dilapidated structure, they'll be guilty of a violation of this code, and they will get a ticket for $25. Why, is, think, the, why is it just waterfront? Pardon? This is for docks. Oh. Dilapidated or dangerous waterfront structure. Agreed. That's I mean, pretty simple. <laughs> it, needs, it needs to have some consequences that say if you don't remove it within the time frame permitted, the city will remove it and charge it back to you and put it as a lien on your property tax. Now, Cindy, wouldn't that also be an example, though, of something that would go to council? Yes, it would the go to council. Yep. Can actually so, so you're saying that the city fee schedule does not have a penalty of $25? It's the um, civil infractions fee schedule. It's $25 for the first infraction, $50 for the second one, and $100 for the third one. That's a nuisance fee in my opinion. Yes. Why, so why, why can it be a per day? It can be, every day can be a separate violation, but there are attorneys really don't like that. Because? Because it is excessive. When it, it's, it doesn't match what the intent of the civil infraction violation section is that was adopted by the state statute. So what I'm saying is for the first time <coughs> you get a ticket for $25, Second time you get a ticket for $50. And if you don't still don't take it down, the city will go in and take it down for you and charge it back to you, the cost back to you. And if you don't pay it, then it will go on your property tax as a lien. Nominal amount of money. Pardon? Nominal amount of money, frankly. Yeah, it's not, it's just a nuisance. That's not a disincentive. Nope. So the consequences, are you looking for a suggestion on increased fees? Are you looking for no. a suggestion on? Take it down. City, if you don't take your dock down that's falling apart and floating into within, everybody within else's 20 dock. 20 days or 15 days or whatever. Right. Then the city will hire somebody to take the dock down for you. Charge because it's you a public the safety issue. Yep. And, uh, sure. I think that's good. Mm -hmm. So on this one, you're actually saying just take that whole notice section out. No, or keep or in the notice section, add on to it what the consequences are. No, $25, $50, $100, $175, just that's going to be taken down, replaced, repaired, and cost. you're paying the bill. Yep. Just, I, I, can get a, I agree with that. That's just, are you dealing with one right now, you said? Yep. A dock? Because mm -hmm. this is for docks, waterfront structure. So it's in the yeah, I thought that might include like the fish shanty where it was before. Yeah, this is this one is a dock on Park Street that is pieces are falling off of it, part of it's underwater, and the neighbors have finally had enough 
they, they know the family has problems and they can't probably afford to do it. So I can't just keep sending them a ticket. Right. It has to be resolved. And that's <clears throat> what I'm thinking. So they're obviously not even using the dock. No, they're not. I don't think they're living in the house either. The grass is long, the garbage is not being picked up. And um, this is suggested by a ZBA member that on major waterfront construction, you have you can't put a dock within the side yards, but in minor waterfront construction, you can. So um, I think this is really logical to copy that from the major waterfront into the minor. I'm not sure what the extension of the required setback into the riparian rights area. One, I'm not sure what one and a half times the allowed boat length means. So I would have to ask him what that, what that is because I, it doesn't make any sense to me the one and a half times the boat length. But I think it's a good um, suggestion. No, okay. So in the major pier section, it has this wording. In yes. the minor pier, it doesn't. Right. So it's just adding that wording so that really it applies to both major and minor. Yes. Do you think the existing dis distinctions, definitions between major and minor are sufficient, clear enough? No. Yeah. That's what but that's a what's discussion a for, that. that's a really substantive discussion. So <laughs> right now I, I'm just trying to get some stuff so we have something when we do talk about substantive stuff, we have a good basis to work with and we don't have duplications and inconsistencies and things that are just not right. So now I'm gonna talk about the two ways that we could move forward with this. We can schedule a public hearing for July and fix all the things that we just kind of talked about. Have a public hearing, make the recommendations to city council and um, get this, this little, I call it housekeeping or little stuff kind of cleaned up or we could have just one public hearing. Maybe I'll have it ready by August to do the, these little things, plus a few other things that I think need to be done um, that I can get a notice to the paper to have a public hearing in July, cover these things, or we could just schedule one public hearing in August and um, get some more of the, not quite so substantive things done, smaller things. The things I think we need to have real conversations are on like marinas, waterfront constructions. Those are not little items, but if we got these things done, then we could focus more on the, the big stuff. Remind me again, how much notice ahead of the, of the public hearing is required? It has to be published in the paper 15 days before the public hearing. So our paper publishes once a week on a Thursday. So that's 14 days before the meeting. So I have to get it the week before that. So it usually takes a full month for me to get it published. Does I agree. Because I have to get it to the paper on Monday before the paper comes out. Sort of hesitate to ask this, but does it make sense to run any of this even top line it with the council beforehand? They have to do it twice. So they have to have two, two meetings on it. Yes. The reading of ordinance or the was it, ordinance introduction is what they call it. And they usually talk about it at a workshop mm -hmm. before. And then they talk, they accept it to schedule, uh, to put it on the agenda for the following council meeting, which is usually two weeks. Do they, my question, I guess, is do they get a heads up? I don't know. Your briefing that would them be, or a, something? be a question for our council liaison. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what I would I do. mean, just if there's something that where somebody goes, holy cow, we can't, you know, goes ballistic. 
So at the public meeting, can you address all of these items that we just did in one meeting? Yes. Now, do we have to determine if it affects any particular zone or business and then notify everybody within X number no. of feet? No. Okay. So just a notification in the paper would be okay. So kind of my thought here from a council standpoint, well, one is this is one of the, remember we did some goal setting back earlier in the year. Yes. This is our first goal. Right. Continuing improvement of zoning code and housekeeping. So, which is essentially what Cindy has been doing. Um, I think the message to council, Cindy, and in, in your planning report is, is a, um, just a simple, uh, in support of our, one of our goals, First goal number one is doing our housekeeping. And here are some things that we're gonna be discussing. We're gonna be holding a public hearing. Um, our next meeting would be July 21st. Okay. If I have this right. So we'd have to have that public noticed by yeah, the 11th maybe, no. No, oh, it's gonna be in June sometime. Okay. That I have to get it, cause I need a week to get it into the paper for their publication. And their publication is only 14 days before our meeting. It has to be 15 days. So I have to get it the week before that. So you said you had to get it sort of like next week, right? Yeah, I think the deadline would be next week. <clears throat> yeah. We wouldn't necessarily have to notify council of that notification, but we could at that second Thursday or second Monday of the month, which is gonna be um, our last council meeting of the month is going to be, come on. Hold on. Can't get back to John. I, I think can't you have back to the 27th, right? Yeah. Uh, yes, 27th. July 22nd? 27th. 27th. Yeah. That'll be our second, our fourth Monday of the month. So I think at that meeting, we, which we'd already have this notice out about this, is just giving them a heads up. I think probably the key thing in that is the commercial boat one. That probably would get the most attention out of any of the items that are being Which, the commercial boat suggestion. It wasn't that long ago that they took out out of the business licensing the requirement that you had to take money inside of a building. It wasn't, it wasn't, it was well during the time I was here and I've been here six years. So yeah. And, and so I'm, so I'm in support of the approach. Um, I think from my personal perspective as a planner, I think there's a lot more to go yet. Mm -hmm. I think this, oh, yes. is a good starting, yeah. this is a really good starting point. Um, so, I'm, so I'm on board with that. I have some thoughts about some of the other things that were discussed. So once we get through this part of it, I'd like to just kind of run through some things. Okay. So, but I guess if everybody else is on board with this approach, do it. So we're going to try to do the public meeting just for the housekeeping yep. in July. So you'd have to have it in the paper yep. by June 30th. Yeah. Because June 30th would be, gives you that 15 days. Because that's the Thursday. It counts 15 days, but you got to remember, I have the deadlines to get it to the paper. Right, right. But I'm saying it would have to be in the June 30th edition because the following Thursday is too close. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah, essentially shooting for that 30th. Publication. Yep. Is that sufficient time? To do the housekeeping stuff? Yes, because I've got most of it organized. And then when we have the public hearing things that we talked about tonight, I will offer them up uh, at that public hearing or before in my packet. Yep. And then you'll have a chance to see them. And I think what I would like to do is I extracted all of this ordinance from the online version and I extracted it into Word so I could edit it. It lost some of its formatting. It doesn't look as nice as it does in the printed version of the copy, but I have to edit it. So um, I don't know where I was going with that. I would think that any pages that didn't have any changes on it, I could delete those pages so you wouldn't have to have so much Correct. tree kill Correct. and so much possible reading. 
I don't know if you want me to delete pages that the only thing that they have is a comma inserted. Seems like commas something that you can almost take care of with the, without having to print it. Yeah, you can make it a, yeah. a, an upfront notice that if a page only involved a punctuation you change, show it's like not you on the list. So. Or, show like you did here yeah. as Just an the example. Highlights. Yeah, because I changed the Department of Environmental Quality about 15 or 20 times. I, Right, and every I don't page. think you need to review that <clears throat> if it's appropriate more than just the first time it shows up. I think you can up. make that clear in the public hearing that if it's a change like and that, if it's wants only shown see. here once. Yeah, I mean, in the public hearing, when you're when if it's commas or if it's thing about eagle, you could just have on the slide that this applied in, and then just list out the fifteen places where you actually made that change without having to give them an actual page. Just list, list out. Yeah. As long yeah. as I have the entire document available for somebody to review right. if they right. wanted to. Yeah, I think the just for brevity alone, I think just if people have any interest in looking at what the actual ordinance is, that they can just go right back to the ordinance online. Absolutely. And that like, saves you some time and it's brevity. Is. And I think the only one from my perspective that's gonna get any real attention is that commercial ball one, just based right. on past experience. Or any time as if you're talking about adding in consequences, something where yeah. you know, yeah. right. anything that points to you. It's not just yeah. the housekeeping type yeah. of. And I, have to, I would have to take that to our city attorney first to make sure that that's legal to do that that way, but. Or even if you had to say that, you know, and make reference to some other place <coughs> where if you don't cut house. your grass the state statute says we can go on your property and cut your grass and charge it back to your property tax as a lien so don't drive by my house <laughs> <laughs> but you can definitely see how many pages are in here that don't have don't anything. have any changes so be no reason. My, but actually that brings up a good point because my because my wife i fought it for a while but she said we're not cutting the grass anymore because she's Doing the no mo thing, and um, I don't know if anybody else around is doing it, but it's scoff it, law. You, it's a thing, it's and a thing. Uh, she's a she's done a great job in landscape in the front yard. But um, if you were to drive by, you look that gardener guy. He needs to get his act together, and since got Herbert's there cutting the grass. Well, if the city shows up on Monday, you know. <laughs> right, right. But but I think the point the point I'm making is that that's kind of an evolution, right? <clears throat> that Definitely. that's that's actually it's a thing. So. I don't know if our zoning code actually discourages that or if it prohibits that or if it it's not in our zoning ordinance it's in our general ordinance. right so i think that's an area that probably we don't address but i think that's something that the city should be looking at too just to encourage that it's, it's i'm still not quite on board with it yet it's just <laughs> i want to cut the grass but it's it, you're right it's a totally evolving thing and it's yeah. it's a personal preference thing and it's you know, I can see if you let your. Those taking money outside with Apple Pay. <laughs> needs to be caught in one of those pre wedding uh, husband wife checklists, bride and groom checklists. Yeah. <clears throat> I like a front lawn that's nicely tailored versus <laughs> I want mine overgrown with a totally natural one. You find, <laughs> you know, and you go down those lists and you get to the, a certain number, like six or seven, where they're like this. You're going, you know, you may want to think about this. Yeah. A prenup. Yeah. Well, yeah. well, one of those questions on there, I know, because my son just went through it not long, that long ago, was what dollar number are you comfortable spending without your partner's knowledge? And it's and you. <laughs> so if she says fifteen thousand dollars and he says three hundred, you kind of yeah. It's, 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 doesn't have make the have decision, but you kind of go, wait, you, you need to talk about this. You, yeah, you this have to have out. some similar values. It just doesn't. Hard well, should we leave? The, should we make that motion? So somebody want to make yes, that, the please. motion that was up there a minute ago? Um, where did I put it? Entertain the motion regarding ordinance changes, cleanup, and so forth. I just set this up kind of vague because I didn't know. I just want to change it to July. Yep, change it to July. Yeah, we don't need to get into the exact timing of notices and so forth. That's just yeah. going to be. That's just there. something. Is this for July or August? July. 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 You, you think you can do that? I think I can do this. 
by July, what we have here in this packet. Okay. So move. So what did we learn in our meeting? <laughs> but the thing is, we need to, have, we need to amend it because you can't say so moved what's right. up there because it has August. Oh, there. well, so move, can you? All right. Uh, just be, I make a so motion possible to... motion. No, we don't need that part. Uh, I move to set a public hearing for various amendments to the zoning ordinance at the regular meeting in August. Uh, I'm sorry, in July for recommendation to city council for adoption. July 21st, if I want to be official about it. Okay. So. Voice vote, all right, Cindy? Yes. Voice vote is fine. Uh, okay, those in favor of the motion signify by saying yes or aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, motion passes unanimously. Good job. Okay. On um, on my agenda, I said that we were going to have a, a video that we got from our training about how meetings run, and I decided I'm not going to subject you to even five minutes of video. I'm going to send you a link, and you can watch it at your leisure. Thank you. And um, there's some, a lot of information that we got from that training that I, that I think if it's pertinent, I will send you a link to look at it. I don't know if Bobby or Steve, did you have anything you want to add? I just wanted, I don't know if, I'm, I can't remember who all was part of that training, but you know, the first session was kind of a little, I thought slow and a little lame, but the second two, when they talked about the running of the meetings and then right. you got into the parliamentary procedure, I thought was very good. Mm -hmm. And the resources, if you were part of it, which I think I have video came from, uh -huh. uh, there's a number of resources, like just for good reference points, you know, because it's being kind of newer to being part of some of these committees. There was things I definitely pulled away, you know, as to like the different roles of you know, committee mm -hmm. members, the chair, the public. Uh, so there was a lot of very good I, it, it was also timely, you know, with the way, the way the training came in, you know, right after such a contentious meeting that we had, had you know, mm -hmm. with the public on the uh, in April. So I thought it was very good, and I thank you for you know finding it and suggesting it to us. Well, MSU does send me rather frequent emails about what training is available, and I do try to pick off what might be helpful or valuable for our members you know, all the yeah, time. I I appreciate seeing it. Yeah. I thought it was good. It was one of the few where I think I was telling you. I said, actually, I remember I took it. I make cut copies. I print a few things for myself just to kind of remember. For it. It's like normally it, that whole training I did the year before, I was kind of like, well, I remember parts of it, but I didn't like take notes. Yes, so it was good. Okay, so no video. No video that moves us to reports of officers and committees, which I don't know of any that we have. We don't have any committees, I don't believe. Uh, which brings us to public comment. Limit of three minutes. No one in the room. No indication from anyone online that there No are. hands raised. No hands raised. So we'll close public comment, there being none. Um, we usually go around the table or commission or comments any, any on any subject, on any thought. Richard, Richard. <clears throat> um, yeah, I would only say nice job on getting us uh, through this first phase of uh, edits. Thank you. Richard, other Richard? Richard, number two has nothing. I'll go last if you don't mind. Sure, Bobby. No additional other than thanking Cindy, obviously, and saying the same with the, with the training. Okay. I agree. I had one thing I wanted to take. I was going to do this by phone, and then I thought, oh my God, that'll probably tick the open meetings law or some allegation related to it. So I didn't do that. Um, a notion that I'd be interested in whether 
you would be interested in holding planning commission meetings monthly, whether or not there's an application or, or like a, a zoning ordinance review or whatever, um, to allow for looks at any number of areas that might be of interest. Part of the motivation for that is 60 days is a long time just between seeing each other mm -hmm. and talking. Um, but a comment I've heard over the years is, I'm pick a, an instance or whatever, but where was the planning commission on thus and such or why, and, and I'll give you, you know, you know, we all know short-term rentals is on that list. Mm -hmm. Why isn't the planning commission? That's why mm -hmm. we, I think it would give us a chance to potentially create subcommittees to de deal with that or to deal with it as a full commission, but to look at a specific topic area, not necessarily to develop ordinance changes, but simply to look at it, potentially hold a, uh, you know, sort of some sort of stakeholders uh, 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 stakeholders opportunity to just come in and talk. We were not proposing that we're going to do this or that the city should do this or whatever. We, if you have thoughts, I'll use short-term rentals on, in a, you know, for one of these meetings or on short-term rentals and would like to share them with the planning commission, which is looking at the, please come tell us. So. Sorry. That's right. Among other things, the, the record is the public record is then out there that we're doing that. But it also stands the chance of actually making some headway on some of these projects. I mean, view sheds, waterfront, waterfront development, which uh, Russ has mentioned, and others have mentioned. Those subjects will never really come before us until there's a very charged environment related to whatever caused it to come before us. <clears throat> and to be able to look those people in the eye and say, well, you know, we we did, we have addressed it, we've listened, you know, whatever. This is this is not something, not an area we've ignored. You know, marijuana would have been one of those things or whatever. We had but, a lot of meetings about marijuana. <laughs> and we had a lot of meetings about marijuana. So um, but on the on the downside, it is more time for all for in, in all of us. And I understand people are filled up with so what you were thinking is that it, each of them, if we don't have a monthly meeting, we'd still have it and just kind of start looking through all well, we'd have a monthly meeting or we'd we'd be open, for example, the notion of submitting topic areas, you know, not tonight necessarily, but of things on like I did, but not necessarily those or whatever. Right. And then kind of start to begin to grab one of those and say, okay, how, how, do, how do we wanna think about attacking this? How do we, you know, do we have a listening session? You know, do we see if the city council has a, a, a questionnaire going out that could be input? I don't know, whatever it is, but we're engaged at some level in important topics that we should be engaged in. And it's not fun to be engaged in them when people are ready to shoot each other. So, sure. I think that um, when we signed up to do this, we all expected to be at monthly meetings. So, um, uh, I don't, I don't think that's an issue. And I really, I mean, um, once we get into try community planning, mm -hmm. yes, um, we should be having monthly conversations yes, about that. Absolutely, if not more frequent. So, I've been thinking about that, and. Um, um, and generally, just every once in a while, I don't know if this would be appropriate, but Russ brought up earlier, you know, our goals that we set for ourselves for this year, sort of taking a, a step back and saying, how are we doing against mm -hmm. those goals? So, yes, I agree. I mean, I've heard um, council member from time to time, I would say, defending to a person in the public saying, well, see, the planning commission looks at all this stuff. Well. That's not it. In a lot of cases, that's not the case. It's just a way to hand off responsibility. But I think the planning commission should look, you know, and, and avail itself of more knowledge and more feedback and more public opinion 
then that which will inevitably, as I say again, be <clears throat> confined to a meeting where people are really, both sides are upset about it. That, that nothing's gonna get done productively that way. I, I wouldn't mind being, maybe I'm kind of lazy. I could probably do it myself, but, um, and I hate to lay more on Cindy, although I, I don't hate it that badly not to do it, I guess. But, um, you know, the sort of the state of the art or the state of some of these topics in the neighboring community and not so neighboring communities. Somebody was asking me not long ago, like, would, aren't you guys aware of all the of B and B uh, ordinances from? And she specifically said Spring Lake. I don't know if there's been some activity up there. And of course, there I was aware of some in South Haven within the last couple of years. And uh, I had not heard about this Spring Lake thing. And and you know, what, what is going on out there? Are people trying to address that? It's a very difficult subject, obviously, but what is the state of the art in, or, you know, in, in that? And, and, and marijuana uh, as well, you know, who's doing what a little bit, you know, back when we voted originally on the marijuana thing, I was telling somebody the other day, uh, it seemed to me like there was about uh, less than 20% of municipalities and townships and that I think at that time had voted in favor of, of any of any, I think that was the number that and, and it was very new and, um, uh, and I said well what's the big hurry why don't we, you know what's the big hurry and we did a thumbnail thing about how much money there even there was to be made at it and, and we now kind of, we know how much it is yeah, well yeah and the numbers that we came up with at that time were were fairly much lower they were south of say twenty thousand dollars if i our just rough estimates which turns out to be higher although i wouldn't uh you know, I wouldn't, I, I think we've got a different kettle of fish here than we do than, than out in the hinterlands. And, uh, but anyway, I wouldn't mind being kept up to date on what that's looking like and, and, and anything else we could think of. And some of that will overlap with the master plan mm -hmm. because some of the things there's part of that we talk about like the tri community. So then you need to get their involvement in trying to understand what are they doing and how, how consistently are you looking at the overall region? Because I do agree with you. That's one thing that, you know, I try to like ask some of the people I know that live in Douglas, you know, what they're doing within their planning commission or within their zoning, only because let's face it, we butt right up against them. And I live in a neighborhood where if you're on the south side of Campbell, you're in Douglas. If you're on the north side of Campbell, right. you're in Sagatown. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's... Uh... Well, I... To the extent I've got a vision on this, it's not to try and tackle multiple things necessarily at right, once, right. nor to try and tackle any one thing at all in one bite. I, I would see it as, you know, hell, we, we could just decide, we could just we propose our list of, you know, five whole large areas that we want to look at and then proceed through them one at a time where there may be six meetings on right. one to get to where, and we're not, the end point is not, we've got a law or an ordinance or whatever. The end point is, do we feel comfortable that we've taken the pulse of the community, learned enough, yeah. you know, gone to local, analyzed local jurisdictions around us and so forth, that one at a time. But, but over the course of a two year term, if it's six, that means you're tackling four of those big areas in a two year term, that's not too bad. And it's when you don't have other things on the agenda. Yeah. Well, and you can include them. I mean, depending on, again, you, you let it expand or contract based. Yeah, you don't want. Yeah, I don't think we would want to. No, we don't want to be here at time. Have an hour discussion about general things after we've just had two right. or three special land use applications right. on the agenda. Yeah. So I'm just kind of wondering logistically, did. Um, I've heard short-term rentals, and I have that on my agenda. It's on my calendar. In fact, I've printed off some maps from 2014 and 2022, well, what we have for short-term rentals, and it's on my desk. So that's on the, on the table. If there's any other topics 
that you want and how do you want an agenda? Do you want an agenda to say, this is what topic we're gonna to talk about or do you want it just be kind of um, organic? Um, so first thing, um, several months ago, I asked the council specifically, I said, as we were doing these goals back in February, I think it was, I said, Council, if you have any policies or anything you want from the Planning Commission to be looking at in this year, in the following year, please tell us. I've not heard a word. Have you? Okay. So having said that, then I think it's up to the Planning Commission to, within its, within its boundaries, to begin talking about some of these items. And again, fully aware of the fact that the legislative body, you know, mm -hmm. has, has interest in this too. But I don't think we should not do anything at all. So right. my suggestion would be is, and I'm just looking back at our goals. One of them was housekeeping, which we're doing some of that now. Commercial districts to eliminate inconsistencies. Portion of code got dropped fences is the comment I had. Marinas and waterfront development, construction and development. Code is inconsistent with rest of code. This sounds like Cindy said that, Cindy that said this. Does the code say what we want it to say? Mm -hmm. In my opinion, that would be one of the first things we want to look at. Agreed. Parcels in two zone districts. How should code be written to accommodate parcels which are in two zones? That's on my list. <laughs> Review vacating streets slash alleys policy into ordinance. Expand R4. Evaluate whether all the zone districts that we have are needed. I think you'd mentioned that we've got what, 24 zones? I think we have now 20. 20. We and eliminated one, which was a good one. I think that's something that should be looked at too to, to, to the point is begin to simplify this so it's easier for you to manage as a zoning administrator. It's easier for us to understand as planners, but more importantly for our community mm -hmm. to be able to make sense of all of this. And probably the tri-community project will, tri-community master plan will probably try to tackle some of this as well. But I think starting to prepare us for that. And then the short-term rentals too. That one's got a lot of political charge behind it, obviously. Yeah. But I think from my perspective, putting on my planning hat, part of what this zoning code should do is make this a good place to live and a quality of life here. My personal opinion is that the short-term rentals are beginning to detract from that to some extent. Mm -hmm. Now, it's not just planning issues, but I think that's something from a planning standpoint, we should be looking at the zoning ordinance and making sure that it's consistent and that it supports the overall tri-community master plan, right? My right. sense is that if you even mentioned short-term rentals to the public, you're going to get those seats filled. Yep. Well, you will because you're going to have both sides. Both yeah. sides. And I think increasingly the side that says have, or we had a tipping point here. Yeah. And, 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 I think, and I think many communities are addressing it now. Same by thing. Putting, yeah. 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 And we paid any right. attention to what we learned in master planning. I mean, this is the kind of thing we should be mm -hmm. doing. Right. And, and, and again, I don't think that, I think the public might misunderstand what our role is. Our role is to, to make sure that everything that we have from a zoning administrator standpoint and zoning code standpoint supports what people want from the community, right? Mm -hmm. Does it do that in some of these areas? I have some personal opinions about that, but I'm just one of seven. So I, so I completely on board with this approach. I think it would make sense to prioritize these and just begin to put them on the calendar. And I don't have any issue at all putting these specifically on the agenda and saying, we're gonna carve out an hour at our meeting, assuming that the applications are, are if we have one get work through, right. we methodically go through these and it's very focused on the zoning code. We're not trying to re, we're not trying to usurp the council. We're not trying to do. Right. We're not even having a public hearing to, to make a, you're not recommending a change. Right. At that at that meeting anyway, you may end up saying you're going to address it in the next meeting, which requires a public hearing because you're actually going to make a recommendation for a zoning change or something. I'd like to yeah. get the public in here before we're at that stage. Exactly. I mean, I want to get them in there for sure. You have to then, right. but before they're at that stage, so that so we're not just speaking as, as valuable as it is to have these minds, but if there's community sentiment out there strong on some of these subjects. Get it, let's get it out there now so that not to make a recommendation on how do you solve this, but to a minimum go to the council and say, hey, you know, we said we were going to look at this, we're looking at this. Here's what we found so far. You know, there's heat on this or there's whatever, whatever it is. Just yes, to, you know, uh, there's one more than that. And I know that we've looked at this before, and you, the minute you do, you get 
uh, the, uh, the property owners involved, uh, strong settlement, but the development of our, the remaining parcels of waterfront downtown here, uh, just looking at the current zoning and looking at, and it's going to be very, it would be very dense and it would, uh, it, it would, it would alter the character of the town and uh, the, from the, the downtown. And to get, I don't know if there's something more creative that we can be doing in terms of far be it for me to recommend more PUD, but, but you know, if there's something more that we can do, and I don't know, I, I don't know enough yet, but the remaining parcels that need to, that can be developed and redeveloped and still try to retain the character of this area here that, uh, and we all know what we mean. Exactly. Uh, because these things just never come out as good in brick and mortar and wood as they do on paper. They just, I mean, if I should know that by now. I do know that by now. Well, they, they, just, they, they just don't look as good as you think they're going to look. Dan, I have a vote a call for a, a board meeting vote. I'm going to go do it. Not a problem. See you all. Thank you. I'm all in favor of the meeting. All right. See you. Thank you. All right. Thanks. All right. Um, I don't know. I'm the main Richard now. So, so I think, you know, as we said back in February, before a lot of what we're talking about is, has come up, arenas and waterfront construction and development, and I would just I would just focus in on what Cindy brought up. Code is inconsistent with rest of code. Does the code say what we want it to say? That starts the discussion. It's just like what Richard was talking about. It's like, yeah. does the code for that zone say what we want it to say? Is it restrictive enough? Are we right? trying to preserve, or do we want to listen to other people who maybe have a different opinion and, about what it should be? And, and Cindy had made some changes to that, but then you you get the print, the, the property owners, uh, admit, you know, and they're, they're going to have beliefs on this thing, oh, and, it, and it's dollars and cents is going to be, uh, you know, as well as, and... Uh, and I think to Dan's point, that's where you want the public here. You want them to be engaged with this, not just the business owners, but the people that enjoy these areas too. Well, I would like to just see if we couldn't get a little better of something or else just assure ourselves this is as good as it's going to get. So when, you know, so that it's like, well, at least we've looked at it. And it probably goes with a lot of these things. At least we've looked at it and we've done the best we can. My, uh, on that particular one might engage the uh, historic commission as well mm -hmm. because they've got I would say more judgmental ability to What's maintain the, well they've soft got more side. latitude probably I would yeah. I think know, and, and to deal with stuff that's you know very hard to put into development restriction language and but if but if we're really talking about character stuff, it's really more in their area than it is in ours mm -hmm. to, to effectively regulate. But it. I, I think right now we go, we, we're, are we at zero clear, zero uh, lot line? So they could, there could be a building just boom, 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 a wall, a wall of buildings uh, for, for the, the, the old pavilion site, the Coral Gables site, the, the next site down, and maybe maybe the old uh, shed there, the the old, the, boat, barn. The old boat barn. I mean, it, it's zero clearance. You've got boom, and that that I mean, I I'm afraid that that just wouldn't be the. And the time to deal with it is uh, is before it happens, because when it happens, the other side's going to have so much Invested. money. I, to, yeah. to pursue what they're You're after. already going to get significant, but there, if there's significant pushback, as they say nowadays, but if there's some creative things and maybe we need to even call in some kind of architectural planning or some or site planning or some extra cranking, some little bit of extra help. Uh, well, you know, I mean, from our, our uh, class, you know, and the ones where they start showing you a picture and you go, you know, now I'm dealing, oh, that, and you don't necessarily have to mandate, it has to look like that, but it gets people thinking in terms of 
generally what things should look like. And that's helpful. But again, to me, that's, that's closer true. to a historic. Yeah, so, so I would recommend that we look at in July, we have our first discussion about marinas and waterfront construction development specific to the concern that Cindy brought up is, uh, does the code say what we want to say and is it is it consistent with the rest of the code? Just start there. And you can list that on a, uh, we can list it on the agenda as a commission discussion. Yeah. It doesn't a, have to be. Does it, do you want it to have a topic with it? Yeah. I would just say, can, code cleanup or something to, or annual or continuing improvement well, yeah, of zoning code, continuing you, improvement. But you could, if you're gonna deal with waterfront, oh, focus on waterfront, yeah. say it. Right, yeah, so I would like now, to know what you want to focus on because that way I can do the homework and the research. Right. And right. Get it and, prepared. And That's I right. frankly haven't read it recently. So I'd have to reread it to kind of get an idea of. That's why I just made a note to like go back and yeah, read right, myself. Right. Um, and also kind of on that point, the council is in the midst of our budget work. And um, Cindy, a question for you in terms of dropping some money in the budget um, for some of the stuff that we're talking about. Um, part of my role as a city council member, as well as a planning commission member is to suggest if we need money for additional projects we might wanna be looking at. So I'm asking if there's anything that we would want to, Cindy, particularly from the zoning administrator, you may have had this conversation with Peter already, but what is the planning commission? Do we think we want to put in $10,000 for professional support for some of the conversations? We have? I don't know. That, that, I just throw that number out there, but I'm just saying now's the time. Right. You only get one shot. Once it's done, it's done. And, or not done. Or and not done. Not, not stays not done. Yeah. I would, yeah, I would what like do you to, if we're going to do this in a more organized fashion, to have some money to call on our zoning consultant, David Jurassic, who did our little training mm -hmm. for yeah. And it, I think that class that he did or that training that he did was about $1,200. So well, uh, I would say- As Rich says, put, put the money in there. Yeah. Um, Leave me there. The, so if we, can, <laughs> if we plan for $1,200 a month for the next 12 months, that would probably cover like it. So that's a month. Fourteen four. Yep. So twenty four thousand dollars. We can even twenty five. Yeah. It also lets them, the world know when you commit that resources. We're yeah. We're serious about it. I mean, we're not playing around. We're trying yeah. to get something done here. And it's a good basis for our master planning. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so. Like that. Go. So I I'm going to be sending an email to to the city in regards to some of the things I wanna see in the budget from a city standpoint, council standpoint, would this come from you for the planning commission or would you, or I mean, I support it. So either, which 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 is gonna have more effect? I think it would have more power coming from you. Okay, I'm more than happy Not to that do I that. don't want to do it or I'm too lazy to do it. I just think it would have no, more impact. Absolutely fine to do that. Uh, would it okay. would enhance that if we- the chair? Uh -huh. Would it be better to have him send it as a chair of the planning to you, Russ? I was going to say, what if we, what if we took a vote with that as, as that being a recommendation the commission wants to pass? Sure. Its yeah, that actually would give it a little bit of additional authority. Yeah, I, good, good call, Dan. Um, also gets me out of the line of fire, and believe me. <laughs> And since still, I'll be, I've, since, I've still got bullet holes to work on. Since I'll be taking the action, prefer someone else makes the motion, and then I can. Right. Can we can we make a motion at this point? Since we've already. No, we haven't adjourned. Yeah. I, I think you can make. Maybe I'm, I don't know, but I think an internal motion like this, which is not. Not like, a public hearing. Yeah, it's Thank just you. a request. That's a recommendation. Yeah, just a, a procedural recommendation as to budgeting $25,000 for planning commission. Now we're we trying to do 25, Cindy said 1,200 a month, which would be 14,004. Yeah, we moved it up. So you'd move it up to two grand a month, so. I mean, again, to Rich's point, you don't spend it, it goes right, back. I mean, right, yeah. but if you don't ask I mean, for I it. I could make, but you know, it occurs to me, maybe Bobby might or might not want to make that because you're involved as far as I know in the, the planning right. in a big way. Right. Uh, and once we get into tri-community plan, 
it will be more it's going to be more be a lot more than that. Yeah. yeah so um do you want me to recommend or move I, I, I move, move yeah okay. so um i move that um we request that the planning commission request um that the city well, let's see I want to say that twenty-five thousand dollars be designated for planning commission purposes, or to include master plan planning. preparations, professional zoning, professional, professional zoning consultant, yeah, yes. consulting, and, and what have you, yeah. something like that, and that that you know make that recommendation to the city council through the through the city council's representative. representative right. I think that's enough to no. give you something to. It's sort of been our tradition that we spoo out gobbledygook and then Cindy can formulate it <laughs> something good. Maybe you could read. I try. Yeah. Do we have a second? I second it. Okay. No need for roll call votes on this. Those in favor? Yes. Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Nobody. Motion. Passes. But kind of keeps it a little, little more unified, a little more. Yeah, I like this. I, well, I like the approach. Like we took. It goes in the minutes now. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I, I like the approach. Um, the other thing I did want to mention is that though I can't go into detail, um, as everybody should know, Wicks Park Bar and Grill did file suit against the city on May twelfth. Um, the city council has a legal opinion, which we met in closed session on um, at our workshop last Wednesday. Um, more to more to come. At what? I'm sorry. Uh, what was the last part? Of uh, we met in closed session for the legal opinion regarding the suit, and right. that was last Wednesday. And more to come. Just fair to ask. More to that, come. I just yeah. Didn't. yeah. Sorry about that. I, I fair to ask then, or speculate that there, as as, as we stand right now, there's been no opinion. No. There's been, I mean, from the last that I've heard is that it's between the attorneys at this point. The city did. The city council did talk with our attorney in closed session, and um, there, there's going to be some response back from them. Yeah. So uh, the other thing I did want to mention too is that um, we have two terms that are coming up for renewal: uh, Richard and Richard. Um, and I understand both have submitted their applications to be reappointed. Um, so I just want to say that I support that. I, I think that this is a um, it's been a year now that I've been here and I really appreciate working with all of you and, and I think we're just starting to get the planning commission is the kind of thing where turnover doesn't necessarily help us. I think it's better to get our, we all done our work and we're starting it's to. It's important that you share that with council. Yeah, I will. Thank you. Yep. And then, um, so I just want to acknowledge that, you know, thanks for the start. I think July 1st is when the uh, terms are due to be renewed. Three year terms. And so. the interviews are the 21st of June. I have not been notified about anything. But you did fill out the application. Yes. Okay. And, and then the interviews have not been set yet. And it is an appointment by the mayor. Um, and it has to be consulted with the council. I mean, the council has to support that. Yeah. So you might want to talk to the mayor and let her know what your sentiments are. And that would go for the planning commissioners too. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then do we have other applications? Yes, we have two other applications. One from Mark Lachey who applied last year and was interviewed last year and one from Cynthia, I'm pretty sure it's Miller. I'm better with addresses than I am with names, sure. but um, I am. I think it's Cynthia Miller. Did the first one get interviewed last year or not? Yes. I don't know. I, I yes. think Mr. Lachey was um, the person that I was in, in the running with and I was appointed. And who conducts the interviews? That would be the chairperson, the mayor, and me. 
Well, okay, go back to the interviews. Now, I don't am, think am, we're going to interview people that are already on. Okay, okay. I just, I have not received anything. And so, I don't think if they want that, then they need to tell me. I think the term is misspoke for, for what I just said. For what? what? I think the term then is misspoke when I gave them a date. Oh. Yeah, the, yeah. I, I don't think that we want to interview somebody that we already know. It would be, I, we don't want to waste other people's time. We don't want to waste our time. But um, people that we don't know, we do want to interview. So if there's the two openings, you got two applicants, we got two that are two incumbents. So there's two that get, gets interviewed. And then do you make a recommendation to Garnet or he's going to I remember from make a recommendation the last couple of times, or, it's just, it's talked out in the meeting. Yep. With the mayor. After the interview, we talk about it. We Without the interviewee in the in the right, room, right, and get kind of lay out. It's not a hard. I do right. I don't. But I'm saying and then the recommendation goes to the council, council. And, and, and council. because the terms are uh, expiring on July 1st. I'm assuming that's going to be at the meeting on the 27th. Is when those would come forward. Yeah. Is that right, Cindy? Uh, yes. Yes. Yeah. That's correct. We good? Entertain a motion for adjournment. So Thank you. We have to Everybody. vote. Thank we have you. to vote. Those in favor of those in favor of adjourning. It's a motion. Oh yes, I yes. come in. <laughs> I think that's a big eye. Resounding a resounding unanimous yes vote. Okay. Good. And I appreciate you bringing that up about the you know the whole another real planning that we're helping. Well, it's with. like yeah, because it does come up out in the community where you'll say, well, they they meet the ordinance. And it's like.